Welcome to our channel. Are you ready to become a pro game developer in Mini World? Today, we have an exciting tutorial for you. In this video, we will walk you through the step-by-step -step process of creating a simple parkour obi game even if you are a complete beginner. No prior coding or game development experience required. Now, some of you might be wondering, what exactly is a parkour obi game? Well, it's a thrilling type of game where players navigate through challenging obstacle courses by running, jumping, and dodging obstacles. It's both fun and rewarding. But don't worry if you are new to game development or mini world itself. We will guide you through the entire process, explaining each step along the way. By the end of this tutorial, you'll have the skills to create your very own parkour obi game and impress your friends. Throughout this tutorial, we will cover the essentials of game design, level creation, and adding interactive elements to make your game truly engaging. We will break down complex concepts into simple, easy-to-follow instructions that anyone can understand. Whether you are a player who wants to try their hand at game development or a non-developer curious about the creative process, this tutorial is for you. We believe that everyone has the potential to unleash their creativity and build amazing games. So, join us on this incredible journey as we dive into the world of game development in Miniworld. Don't miss out on the opportunity to learn how to create a simple parkour obi game like a pro. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you never miss an update. Let's get started. Welcome to our mini world tutorial. Let's dive into map creation. To start, click the start menu, then select create new world. Next, Navigate to the left side and choose the Developer tab. We will guide you step by step to unleash your creativity in Developer mode. Select the terrain type as flat to provide a smooth canvas for our parkour map. As for the name, let's call it Obi Parkour to reflect the exciting challenges it holds. Don't forget to uncheck monster spawn since we want to keep our parkour map free from lurking animals and mobs. After set up the map generating settings, press play. Now that we are inside the map, let's take a moment to familiarize ourselves with the developer tools. Open the backpack menu and select the developer tab on the left side. Here, you'll find a variety of essential developer blocks. Today, we will focus on three main blocks crucial to gameplay, the spawn point, checkpoint, and initial point. These blocks play a vital role in creating an engaging parkour experience. Let's jump straight into examples for easier understanding. First, we have the preparation point and initial point. The preparation point allows players to get ready before starting the parkour challenge, while the initial point sets the starting position for each attempt. To simplify things, let's place the preparation point and initial point in the same position since we are not creating a separate lobby. This way, players will start the parkour challenge directly from the same location. Now, let's build the first level. We will keep it simple for now. Copy the platform design from the initial point and use it as the checkpoint platform. Place the checkpoint block on this platform. When players reach the checkpoint block and click it, their respawn point will be set. Now, let's test our creation. It seems to be working well so far, but we encounter a problem. What happens when players fall? How can they get back on track? 
Oh, solve the problem, we will add a simple script to improve our parkour experience. In the description, you'll find a link to a wiki site with detailed instructions. Once there, we will search for an event that triggers every tick. Ensuring smooth and uninterrupted gameplay throughout the parkour challenge. Great! We have identified the event name as game.runtime. Let's select and copy it to our code. Now, it's time to dive into the step-by-step -step coding tutorial that will enable players to respawn immediately upon touching the ground below. Now, we will add the script support event to connect our script with an in-game event. If you are struggling, don't worry. You can simply copy the script from the provided site. Let's place our event name, game.runtime, here and name the callback function runtime. Next, we will write a local function with the same name as our callback function, runtime. We can choose any parameter name, but for brevity, let's use E. Finally, remember to include the end keyword to close the function. Now, let's take a closer look at the event parameters. They provide us with two important values, seconds and ticks. Returning to our script, we will create variables named e.secons and e.ticks to store these parameter values. This will allow us to conveniently access and utilize the obtained parameter values. Next, we will search for the API game function that retrieves all the players in the game. This function should belong to the world class since it operates within the world environment. Once found, let's copy it from the provided site and paste it directly into our script. We will then write a for each loop to iterate through the player array following the example provided on the site. Now, let's find the game API that allows us to retrieve the block ID below the player. Here it is. Copy the function and let's take a closer look at the detailed parameters it requires. We can see that it needs the X, Y and Z coordinates along with the facing direction ID and the race distance. Returning to our script, let's replace the parameter values with variables coordinate x, coordinate y and coordinate z for the facing direction ID. You can refer to the example provided even if it's in Chinese. By selecting and translating the relevant information, we learn that the downfacing direction ID is represented by the number 4. Let's set it as such. Additionally, we will set the distance to 1 since we are interested in checking the block directly beneath our feet. Now, let's obtain the location of the players. Heading back to the wiki site, we will search for the player's location. Surprisingly, it's not within the player class, but rather the actor class. We will copy the code and incorporate it into our script. Making sure to set the parameter value to A within the array. Here, I represents the index and A represents the player ID in the world. But instead I just gonna write P letter for it. Now, we will create a local value in our script for easier usage and storage. We will use an array class to store the block IDs with named indexes. However, we need to be careful not to use variable names that are the same as existing game classes such as block, players, world, actor, item, and so on. Let's name our array BK derived from the first and last letters of block. To store the block ID, Let's assign our first value with the index name dead block. We can obtain the block ID using a tool called handheld editor. Simply tap on the block. And we will see that the ID for the ground block is 667. Let's assign this value as 667 in our code. To enhance code readability, let's add a comment here that says, 
put the action to be performed by all players down here. Now, let's write our first if statement to check if the block ID matches the value stored in bk dead block dot. Don't forget to add end to close the statement. We will also create a local function named dead to be executed when the condition is met. Now, let's add the action to be performed when the condition is met. In this case, we want the player to be killed. The corresponding action is actor.killself. Let's incorporate it into our script and set the parameter as player ID. To execute this action, we will call the function dead and pass the player ID as a parameter. However, since player ID is not defined as player ID here, but rather as P, short for player ID, let's make sure to use P when calling the function. Now, let's select all the code we have written and copy it. Open Miniworld and navigate to the Developer World settings. In the Script tab, create a new script and clear the existing content. Finally, paste the copied script into the editor. Now, let's save the script and give it a try. Enter the play mode and attempt to jump. As expected, we die upon touching the ground and we respawn properly. However, we have noticed an issue. When we die, the dead event triggers correctly, but in the respawn menu, it still displays killed instead of respawned. We need to fix that. Now, let's return to the script and make the necessary modifications to fix this issue. We need to acquire the player's HP, health points, so let's find the API for it. Once located, take a look at the parameters. The first parameter is the player ID and the second parameter is the attribute ID, which is to for current health. Let's incorporate this into our script and make the necessary adjustments. We will check if the player's HP is greater than zero, indicating that they are not dead. Now, we want to ensure that after the player dies, they respawn immediately to the designated respawn point. To achieve this, we need to find the API function called revive to cause. Let's copy it and incorporate it into our script. Set the object parameter as player ID. However, we need to define the variables for the X, Y and Z values as we will set the initial player's position after this step. Let's create a new array called raise to store the respawn points for each player. We will also need to create another event for when a player enters the game to initialize their custom properties, specifically the player's respawn point coordinates. Let's find the event name, copy it, and replace the current one in our script. Additionally, change the callback function's name accordingly. Next, let's create a local function with the same name as the callback function, enter game. We will check the parameters it provides and collect them in variables for easier use. Afterwards, we will assign the initial position using the raise array variable we created earlier. For example, we will assign the x, y and z coordinates as minus 347. 10, minus 305 for player ID that enter the game. To ensure the respawn position is correctly set, we will assign the value of the previous API, revive to pause, into the race, player ID, 1, race, player ID, 2, race, player ID, 3. Finally, we want to add the custom respawn block. Now, let's add a custom respawn block to our game. We will name it spawn block. First, Let's decide on the specific block we want to use and obtain its block ID. For this example, let's choose block ID 8. Before we continue, let's make a small adjustment to the initial spawn block. We will move it below the platform so that it's not visible. Now, 
let's condense the if statement, the function call, and the end keyword into a single line. Duplicate this line and add the next line of code to check if the block is the respawn block. Additionally, let's create a function called setSpawn with parameters player ID, X, Y, and Z. Next, let's add the rounded values of X, Y, and Z using the math.c function. We will name them fx, fy, and fz. Then, we will check if the raise player values are equal to the newly calculated values. If any of the values is not equal, we will set the spawn. However, if they are already equal, we won't make any changes. Now, if the condition is met, Let's assign the race value as the current position of the player. We will set the player's revive point to that location. Additionally, we will show a notification to the player indicating that the spawn point has been updated. To add a sound effect, we can use the play sound effect function like this. Alright, it's time to paste the code into the script and test it. Just make sure to enter the correct initial coordinates to avoid any issues. So here is the problem I put the wrong coordinate now it should works fine though. And let's try test it again. A uh, what happened? I am very confused. HMMMM. Don't forget to call the set spawn function within the if statement. Now, let's test it again. This time, everything should work perfectly fine. 